Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to talk about the uh, Go programming language, and we have come we have come to the chapter po uh, regarding pointers and extra variables from the tour.golang.org. So let us just get right into it. If you haven't heard anything about Golang before, then it's a very efficient language. It's more efficient. Um, there's less um, memory uh, print than. For instance, uh, by when, when running a Java program, and there's a lot of um, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, advantages of, of of using a Go program regarding uh, performance re compared to, for instance, Java. Um, but it is weird. It is weird. It smells a bit of um, C plus plus also. Let's get started. I, uh, we have already gone through the, the, the basic stuff with uh, flow control, like what, how to write if statements, how to write switch main statements, and also how to, uh, how to set, um, <coughs> how to set variables. Um, so, but now we are going to look into some more variable types, and there are pointers. We have pointers, just like with C, uh, C++. We have these weird pointers right here, <coughs> and this is how to set it. So we use the star just like with uh, just like with C plus plus. We set the, say that the that the p is now an uh, a pointer actually. So and then um, yeah, first we can declare a variable. But remember when we use the when we use the the colon and then equal to, that means that then we do not need to write var in front. We do not need to have the variable type. It would, they would, they would just be inferred by the right side right here. Then we have the p, which is set to a pointer. So it, uh, yeah, it, it generates a pointer to its operand. So that is the and sign right there. So it generates a pointer. Th this means that if I if we afterwards set the the p value, we are actually also setting the i variable because it is p just points to i in the memory. So that means that it's the same area in the memory that will be set uh, when setting p. And then we have a cool Java example over here. We have i, which is 42, and I'll just change it to 100 right here. And you can see we're setting two, we're setting two variables on the right side, <coughs> i and j, and that is totally possible and okay with the um, with go. Then we say p points p equals to um, yeah to a pointer of i. That means that if we um, if we change the value of p, then we also change the value of i since it is the same area in the memory. Then we print out p. Then we, send, then we set uh, p to some, some, other, some other value, let us set it to 50. Then we print out i, and then we, see, then we should see that new, uh, it has new value. Then we try to play around with p and set it to, the, uh, to a pointer of, uh, to a pointer of uh, j instead. And then, um, yeah, then we di divide j to the pointer, and then we print out j, and then we see which, um, which value we actually have. Let us divide it by two instead. <coughs> so let us run this program. Let us see what actually happens. So first we have 100. That is this statement right here. So first the value is 100. Then we got 50. This is uh, i that we're printing here. So i just changed this value by, by setting it through p because p is, uh, is a pointer. Then we divide by, <coughs> yeah, then we, then we do some weird stuff right here. First of all, we set it to the pointer of j. And j has this big value right here, 2,701. And then we divide this bit with 2, and then we print out j afterwards. And j was actually, uh, as you probably would have guessed, divided by 2. Pretty cool. Let us continue to next. Now we got structs. Structs are pretty cool, because these are just a way to, um, yeah, to contain to contain data, uh, to just to contain some fields. So let me just uh, let me just change my chroma filter right here. I can see it got a bit too low. A bit better, yes. So, <coughs> so we have some structs right here. So that means that we actually struct is like a lightweight class, if you will. So it it's just, it's just, it just contains the the values that we have right here, x and y, and they are of the type int right in both the situation right here. And we have uh, defined our type um, as a vertex. Uh, that's just the name. We could also have named it something else. We name it Mike, uh, Mike instead. And then we can set Mike, and we can set the the fields inside it with by using these curly brackets or like this. Let us run the program. Then we got one and two. Pretty cool. Now of course, if we set it to to ten, then of course it's just ten. We will be printing out the stats. 
Awesome. Thank you very much for giving us, providing us with structs. Remember, with Java 16, we also get records when when we are dealing with Java, so we will not be missing out for that long. We have been missing out for many years, but um, it looks like we get it in, in Java 16. Um, then we have, again, we have the vertex right here. We set V, uh, again, we use the colon, then we don't need to set the type on the left side, then the, the type is just inferred, because we use colon equal to. Then we set V dot X equal to four, instead of uh, one, which is an in initial value. Then we print out the X value. So that, this is how we will use the struct. Struct. We will just use a, the dot um, to, get the, to get the field. We will continue. Pointers to structs. <coughs> we can actually create pointers to struct. Um, this program right here, we have we, first we have a vertex, which is defined up here, which is a struct. So we are defining a new type, new struct right here. It's called a vertex. And then we set it to one, one and two. So that means that these uh, values in here, x and y, will get one and two. Then we set p to a pointer of v. And then we just set the x value right here, and of course then the v, uh, the v value has also been uh, changed because it is the same place. And when we run 1 e 10, that means 1 multiplied with 10 in uh, lifted up in the ninth. So that means actually means this actually means 1 and then nine, nine zeros afterwards. That that's what the, this 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 weird syntax right here uh, looks like. Uh, well, that's that's what it means. So 1 multiplied with 10 lifted up in nine in the so ten in the ninth and that gives us one two three four five six seven nine nine zeros right there and then the one and then we'll print out v so we can actually see we can also use pointers along with structs let us continue then we have structs uh, structs uh, literals <coughs> a struct literal denote a newly allocated struct value by list uh, by listing the value to um, to its fields you can list just a subset of fields by using name, and the order of the name fields are, is ir irrelevant. So instead of just giving the, so instead of using the the order that they actually appear in like this, then we can actually say that we want that we can actually name them. So we can say that the x value should be one, and that is called struct uh, literals again. Again, we can run this program right here. But uh, the point right here, if you are a programmer, then it's uh, it's quite simple what's going on. We are saying that x should be one. And then we create a v3 where we are not, yeah, where the, the, the default values can go if you don't mention anything for it, the, uh, that is zero. So that means that x and y will get zero if we don't give it any default value. Here we set the uh, p as a pointer to vertex 1, comma 2. And then we're printing out a lot of stuff right here. And then we can actually see that p equals, yeah, 1, comma 2. Then we have some arrays. Arrays, arrays are uh, very cool. Uh, of course, we need to, to deal with arrays. That's where one of the first types that you will always dig into. Arrays and maps are, are really necessary for any programming language right, that you have. First of all, we can uh, declare uh, an array by using the square brackets and then the type afterwards. And then, um, yeah, and then uh, we can actually see here the type in uh, T is an array in values of type T. So that means that we actually set that I can all, that can, we actually set the size of the array in the um, in in the square brackets right here. So we, then the size is ten right there. Declare a variable a as an array of ten integers. Yes, that is correct. An array's length is part of its type. So arrays cannot be resized. They cannot be resized. This seems limiting, but don't worry. Go provides a convenient way of working with arrays. Thank you very much, Go. We still feel safe to use this Go language right here, which, by the way, has been developed by Google. So it's Google's Go. Just an extra bonus information. So here we have the main function right here. And here we set a variable A, and we say that it, has, it contains two strings. And then we set the first string, hello world. We can also say this should be hello Mike instead. And again, then we can print out the two values like this. And we can print out the, if we can also print out the, the whole array, then we can see how that looks like in just a minute. Let us uh, be surprised. Then we set primes. And then again, we use the colon equal to, and then um, then the right type will actually be the type. That means that this um, variable type right here would be inferred by the right side, just as we have already learned. Here we have six. 
So it has six integers, and it, uh, uh, this is actually also an array. So this is actually the array. That's, this is a way to give each value of the array. We say it should be an int, and then we say one, two, three, four, five, six. So we are actually compliant with the number, with the size of the array. So let us run this. And just to tease it, we can actually we can actually see here where it says hello Mike. And this is the this is the to string method of an array, if you will, uh, if, if we talk a uh, Java language. This is the string representation of an array. It it just prints out each value with a space between them, and then it wraps it whole, uh, all in a um, in a squared bracket. Here we have the down here the, 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 here we have the prime numbers. Let us try to tease it, and then we will add an extra number. We will add one hundred. Let us see what happens. Oh. Array index out of bounds. If you're a Java programmer, you have definitely gotten an, an array out of bounds, the exception at some point. Um, so this is quite familiar. Let us set this to eight instead. That means now we will actually get a blank value. The blank value, you can probably guess which value it will actually get. It, it will probably get uh, zero, but let's see what actually happens. Yes, it got zero. So now we made it eight long and we only provided seven values. That means that the eighth value will just get the default integer value, which is zero. Continue to the next slide, right here. Slices. Slices. It sounds very dangerous. There's nothing dangerous about slice. It is just a part of an array. So that means that there's actually an array down under the slice, and then there's some very convenient methods to get a part of this array out. Let me just read up this text right here. An array has a fixed size. A slice, on the other hand, is a dynamically sized, flexible view into the elements of an array. So it is a view. A slice is a view into the array, and it is very convenient to use slice in, in, in a lot of time, uh, in a lot of situations. In practice, slices are mo much more common than arrays, and that is because we get all of these nice, convenient uh, methods on the on the slice. The type uh, blah, blah blah t is the slice of elements of t. Okay, a slice is formed by specifying two indices, a low and a high bound, separated by a colon. Okay, so the way we actually create a, um, a slice is actually to use to use the yeah we have the we have the variable right there and then we say which which should the beginning uh, index be and what should the uh, and what should the the end index be. So the following expression creates a slice which includes one, two, three of a. So let us look at a cool example right here. Here we have first of all we are creating an array. So then we create a slice. From from the array, and that means that we will actually get from one to four. That means this 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 value, and then we print it out. Let us try to run the program. Oh, we get three uh, five seven. So the fourth one is not included. Okay, yeah, it is actually. Uh, so we get yeah, it is actually included. So uh, this is zero. This is one. So here we start, and this is two, three, four. So the the fourth is not included. The fourth index is not included, so then we get these three right here. So this is the end of the slice. That is right there. That's why we where we set the cursor, and this is the beginning of the the slice. So so this is the part. This is the slice that we will get out right here. Let us continue. So slices are very useful. Slices are like references to array. Okay, a slice does not store any data. It just describes a section of an underlying array. Changes uh, the element of a slice. Uh, Changing the elements of a slice modif uh, modifies the corresponding elements of its underlying array. All the slices that share the same underlying array will see those changes. Okay, okay, so we need to be mindful of this. And what does that mean? That means that if you have an array right here with four elements, John, Paul, Ringo, why is Mike? We don't have Mike there. And we should also have Susan. Like this. Then we print out all of the names. Uh, let us, uh, okay, what we will do, then we create a slice from from index 0 to index 2. That means that we will get two elements in our slice. Then we get another uh, slice right here, which is from index 1 to index 3. That means that they will have something in common. They will have an element in common. Then we print out A and B, just to see what how it looks like. Then we, print, then we change the first, um, then we change the first element in our slice. And what happens now? What happens now? This is the interesting part. This is the interesting part. Let's just run the program. What happened right here? What happened right here? We have first we have um, first we have let's take it one by one. First we have here here we have Susan, Paul, Mike, and Ringo. Then we have Susan and Paul in, in, in A, and then we have in B we have Paul and Mike. 
And then we just change in the B slice. We only change the value in the B slice. We change we change Paul from yeah we change from Paul to XXX. And instead of X, this could be Jens instead, right? And then we print out both of them, and then we can actually see that both slices has been changed. And then again, we print out the array. The array has also been changed, and that is actually why the reason why both slices are being changed is actually because the array has been changed. Let us just run again with Jens, just for fun. So now it's Jens instead of xxx. A slice literal is like an array, literal without the length. This is an array literal. Here we have a boolean with three values, true, true, false. And this creates the same array as above, then builds the slice references to it. Okay, so here we have a slice, and because we are not giving any uh, length in the array, then this means that this will just be an, a slice with all of the elements. So if you do not give a lower bound and a higher bound um, in, in the slice, then we will just get all of the elements. You could also just give the the higher element, the higher bound by using colon and then like number two or something like that. And here we have this is the definition of array. So we have a boolean array right here, and then we have the slice right there. Let us see what actually happens right here. So here we have this is a slice. This is a slice. And here we have a struct. Here we have a slice of structs right here. So here we have a slice, and this uh, is then the values of the structs. So we have a, uh, this is the array. <coughs> so here we have an array of structs, and then we turn it into a slice like this. And that means that then, yeah, then we get the convenient methods, but um, it is not that smart right now with slices, because we are not we're not taking a subset of it, but it's still okay, it's, it's uh, totally doable. Here we have this little, here we have the slice. This is actually a slice of, um, uh, this is a slice of structs. So, and this is an array declaration of the the structs right here. Pretty cool. Let. Yeah. And uh, if you don't want to know the difference between the array literal and the slice literal, then it's because in the array literal we actually we just gave one uh, number right there. If you use something with colon here inside the, then there would be an, a, a slice uh, literal instead. Slice defaults. Okay, so for the array uh, var a in ten, then this, uh, these slice uh, expressions are e e equivalent. And here comes what I talked about. You can actually just use a, uh, you can use the colon if you want to. You can also skip the colon. You can also write zero and then uh, yeah, the minimum and maximum. You can also skip the minimum. That means that then you would, that, that's the same as zero. And then you can also skip the maximum, then you will also just get all of the elements, and it will take the top bound. So there are some default regarding slices. If we don't say anything, then we'll get from 0 to 2. And let us just print out these numbers right here, so we can actually see that that is also the case. So this is from 0 to 2. Right here. Um, first we get from 1 to 4. That means that then we get... Uh, then we get these. Then we get these three right here. Then we then we are we are still in inside the slice, and then we say, okay, I want um, I want from number one to four. And again, here this time, then now now the first one will be cut. Um, uh, okay, the first one is actually still okay because we are using the underlying array. So uh, that was uh, rubbish what I said there. Forget about that. Yeah, this this is the first slice. So here we here we are slicing it. So here we say. Give, give me the I'm creating a slice from uh, from this array uh, from this slice here so this is a slice first then we're creating a new slice from that then we're printing out a slice then we're creating a new slice again and in this slice here we say we want from index 0 to index 2 that means that the third the third value is being removed and in the end here right here we say we want the we want index 1 and then to the maximum uh, and then that means that then we will only have the, the last uh, value right here, because that was actually the maximum. If we could somehow, if we actually uh, added this, if, if we chose 5 instead right here, then we'll actually end up with um, an extra value in the bottom right here. Uh, no, it will actually not, because we only asked for 2 right here, so that means that then we should also write 3 right there. Let's say that we write 3. So now we get uh, 3, 5, 7, and then we get 5 and 7 in the end. Yeah, slices are fun and very convenient. Length and capacity. A slice has both a length and a capacity. 
Uh, the length of the slice is the number of elements that it contains. The capacity of the slice is the number of elements in the underlying array, array counting from the first element in the slice. The length and capacity of a slice S can be obtained using the expression length S and the capacity cap S. You can extend a slice's length uh, by re-slicing it, providing it has sufficient capacity. Try changing one of the slice operations in the example program to extend it beyond its capacity and to see what happens. So. Here we have a slice, we print it out, then we are... Yeah, now we give it a zero, zero length, so that means that then we should not get... Um, yeah, let's see what actually happens when we use zero as the top uh, one. Then we get a, an empty... Then we give it an empty slice right here. It has a length of zero and it has a capacity of six. And we can actually see that these are being printed out when we, when we use the print slice method or function, the print slice, slice function. It is called functions by default when it's uh, go. So here we have a function print slice. It takes a slice as an argument of the type an integer. And then we print it out like this, length and capacity. And we format it and we use the length, uh, the length function right here. And we also use the capacity function right here. And that is how we can actually get the length and capacity of all of these types right here. Then we have the nil slices. The zero value of a slice is nil. So if there's no content in a the slice, then it is actually nil. And we can actually ask, uh, we can actually check for this in an if sentence like this. If s equal to nil, print out nil. And nil it is. Creating a slice with make Okay, slices can be created with the built-in uh, make function. This is how you create dynamically uh, sized arrays. The make function allocates a zeroed array and returns a slice that refers to that array. Okay, so that means that here we actually get here we actually have an array with a length of five, and there's actually no content in it right now. To, spec to specify a capacity, pass a third uh, argument to make like this. So now we also gave it a capacity, so it has a length of zero and it has a capacity of five. And then again, here we are, yeah, here we are creating a new, uh, yeah, then we are slicing it and say we want it until the capacity of five. So that means now the length is five and the capacity is five. And here we are then setting, we want the new slice again, we want from the first index until the end. So that means that the length is four and also the capacity is four. So we can use make to create um, to create slices if you want to, to to prepare them like this. Yes, let us run the program also. And here we can see the, the here we can see we have these uh, we have the slices right here. And this is the, the trick that we would also use to, yeah, to, to create these dynamically sized arrays. So this is very important to know. If you want a dynamically sized array, you would use the trick like make, um, yeah. Slices of a slice, yeah, what we actually just did that, right? We took slices of a slice, but what, what happens right here? Slices can contain any type, including other slices. Okay. So here we have a slice of another slice. Okay, this is very interesting. It's a little bit of inception, right? So we have a slice of another slice. So that means we need to create one slice per per element inside the array. It's just like having arrays inside arrays. We know that that's possible. And here we have, have a find um, matrix right here. Pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Tic-tac-toe board. Okay, it's actually tic-tac-toe board. That's what it's made from. So here we actually set all the values. X, O, X, O, X, O. And then we can actually print it, and then we can actually see what actually happens right here. XX, OX, and nothing, and X and O, like this. Quite awesome. Slices are very interesting, and they're very useful, and they're used a lot because we do not have these dynamically, uh, the dynamically uh, arrays, dynamic arrays. Dynamically sized arrays. Appending to a slice. What if we want to append? Then there's actually a function called append. Quite cool. So we get the par parameter s of append slice is a type rt and the rest blah 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 blah. So that actually means that if we are appending something to the slice, then as you would expect, 
first we have an empty slice right here. Then we say appends and then zero. Then we get a zero inside it. Then we append one, and then we also have one inside it afterwards. So it's it's quite it's quite simple. If you have dealt with a race or something like that before, then this would not uh, be any surprise. And we can actually append multiple elements uh, at the same time. If you want, so two, three, four is appended right there. Next one, range. I think I will stop the video actually here because um, let me just check. Okay, that's actually not that many. Let, let us con let, we will continue with the range also. The range form uh, of the for loop it iterates over a slice or a map. Okay, so we can actually use a range. So, we have, so this is a for loop, and here we can actually use the range. That means we say i comma v, and here we says we say the v equal to range, and then p o w. P o w is a slice with these integers right here. So that means that this for loop right here, we went through the for loop in the last video. And here we can actually see that the first statement, uh, the, 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 the pre-statement right here is just uh, i. And then we say that um, here we have that, uh, the, the, yeah, here we have the condition, as long as v is in the range of uh, pow, then that is, uh, then that is, found, uh, that is fine. So here we have it. So the range is very good. Uh, it's very nice to know if you want to create. Um, if you want to create for loops that goes through the whole uh, range of the of uh, of a slice like this. R yeah, range is very uh, useful. Range continued. So here we say you can skip the index or value by assigning it to underscore. Okay. So that means that we have underscore right here equals to range or pow, and that means in the last example we actually did not need the, the value. So um, we can actually just here we say for i equal two, and again we define it with the colon. That means it will actually be cre it will actually be created as the uh, as range like this. So that means that we, the type will be inferred from the right side, which is a range of the type um, of, of the type of, of the slice that we have created up here, and we are creating the slice from the make function because we just learned how to use that also, right? And then we have the for underscore blah blah, blah and then uh, we have the value right here, and we can actually see that this example right here should give the same as this example right here. Actually, here we have it. Here we have uh, pow i equal to one. Okay, we're actually changing stuff right here. That's why. So here we're actually using the variable. Here we're just printing out the current value right here. So this is actually. Yeah, here here we actually here we're printing it out. We do not see the the printout from up here right here. Because first we actually create an empty. This because we create an empty slice, but that has a capacity of ten, and then we actually go through this for loop 10 times, that's actually what we do. Then we set it to one, and then we also, uh, yeah, we multiply it by i. <coughs> that's why we have one, and then we have two, then we have four, then we have eight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Yes, let us continue. Exercise slice. Um, I think you should actually do this yourself if you're if you're interested in how to uh, in, in how to play around with the slices. Then there's a small assignment on this uh, task on this uh, on this page right here. I will not uh, I will not continue with anything else. Uh, next time we will go into the maps. I'm pretty sure. It's, yeah, then we go into maps uh, in the next video. But thank you very much for watching and. Um, I hope to see you again soon. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.